Okay, Local Motors is a new American car company that's changing the way that cars are built, sold, and serviced. So we make cars. We also design cars with a community of collaborators around the world, and you come and help make them with us in the micro factory. And, the ex and, and what's a micro factory? We're gonna talk about that. But the most exciting thing is that it starts right here in Phoenix. And that's totally serendipitous because we didn't know TEDx was around when we started. And uh, I guess I've spoken around the world about local motors because everyone's interested about how you do cars small, and so everybody wants to know what we're doing. But the fun thing is that we started it right here in Phoenix, so I'm getting to tell you about it. And you can leave and come down and visit the micro factory as soon as my talk is over. <laughs> um, unfortunately, there are other speakers. So uh, um, come and visit us on Tuesday at 6.30. We have this thing called Burgers, Cars, and Welding. And it's a guy fest. So if you're a gal, you can come down and you can meet lots of guys. And if you're married, you can come down and meet lots of guys. And uh, um, so it's at 6.30. I don't advocate that. If, 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 it's, if, it's, if you're not still working at 6.30, come down at 6.30 in the morning. It's going to be great. It's 6.30 in the afternoon, and we are in Chandler right across from the Firebird International Raceway, Burgers, Cars, and Welding. It's what we do. So, Local Motors, new American car company. This was my grandfather. He owned the Indian Motorcycle Company, and it was a fantastic failure for him. Fifteen years in the business, I'm not kidding, he ran out of every bit of money that he had made when he was 30 years old, and uh, he, it was his love of his life. And he reconstituted himself later on and went and founded the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and Children's Television Workshop, which brought us Big Bird and PBS. So he was an amazing legacy. Uh, growing up as his grandson was an amazing thing, learning from the man. But he loved cars, and I did too. And I always wanted, as one of 17 grandchildren and of the four sons that he had, nobody went into the industry. I didn't even think I'd get a chance to do it. But later on, as I was a Marine in life, I had been an entrepreneur, then I joined the Marine Corps, and it suddenly just occurred to me that it was the right thing to do, and so that's what I did. Um, we do this thing called co-creation. Some people know it as crowdsourcing. This is a big eye chart, two big circles. Um, but what it's meant to show is that this notion of crowdsourcing, which has been written about a lot in the wired generation, is this idea of taking ideas from the crowd and putting them to work. We don't so much take ideas and put them to work. What we do is we take ideas and we work with those ideas with the people who proffered those ideas to put them to work. That's the difference between crowdsourcing to us and co-creation. So if you don't know about crowdsourcing, skip right over that concept and move right on to co-creation. That's the way we feel about it and uh, it tends to work better. So we run an international community of designers and it's important for us to get that right in order to be able to not run over people's feelings when we work with their ideas. So um, another big word that gets thrown out a lot is open source. Open source is different than crowdsourcing. It's different than co-creation. And trust me, I am going to get to talking about cars, but we need to talk about some chickens and eggs first. <laughs> okay, so um, if open source is this notion of taking a something that's out there that's freely available in the public domain and working with it and then submitting my change to it, that's, that's really the best way of thinking about it. And so if you work together on an idea in co-creation, it would seem like a natural follow-on to continue to allow people to work on those ideas, even if they weren't some of the original collaborators. And so that's the difference. So we, we do both at Local Motors. We work with ideas from the community to bring cars to, to work or to, to you on the road, um, what they look like on the outside, what they look like on the inside, what kind of fuel choice they have, all the natural things you'd think about in a car. And then once we get those ideas going, we leave them open for people to continue to increment upon them and make them better. And so it's just like Linux, if you know Linux, and if you have no idea what Linux means, it's just like Threadless. And if you don't know what Threadless is, then I can't help you. <coughs> I can help you, but come see us at Burgers, Cars, and Welding on 630. Okay, so, um, uh, so the egg is our car. That's what we start with. This one's called the Rally Fighter. It's super cool. It seats four people, and it can go across the desert at 35 miles per gallon really fast. And uh, then the, oh, the Creative Commons protected open source nature of the Rally Fighter is what we allow you to work with because we make the whole car open after we do it. There's nothing hidden about it and you don't have to pay. If you go on our site, you can download any of the data that works with the car. So suspension, control arms, um, body data, chassis data, electronics, anything that you want to know about, you can download. And if it's publicly available from the vendors that sell it to us, then you can work with it. Everything that we make is publicly available. 
available in its format. Um, and if you don't know how to work with those formats, we also try to bring some education along in tutorials so that you can use that too. So if you want to change your seats on the interior, if you want to change your uh, exterior look, if you want to change uh, the way that the hinges work on the door, it depends on how deep you want to go or how big you want to go, we make it possible for you to be a modder, we call it. So it's kind of like the restoration mod community. And so, and then we do this chicken and egg thing again and again and again. We don't just stop with the first car that we do. We don't do one-off cars. So we do niche vehicles, the Rally Fighter, which is the name of that first cool vehicle up there. Say that one time again, Rally Fighter. Can everybody say Rally Fighter? <laughs> That's awesome. So great, thank you, it's, it was an indulgence. So, uh, um, so we do the Rally Fighter, we've got 70,000 designs on our site right now and we'd like to bring all of them to market in micro factories just like the one in Phoenix. So chicken and the egg many times over. So we make cool cars, that's our promise. We have a community that's incredible. If you don't know them, come online, come to a Burgers Cars and Welding and meet these folks. They want to collaborate on cars and you never knew how crazy and fun they were. We have a very open source nature, which we've talked about, which means all of our data is available for you to mod and take down. Our ownership experience is one of the coolest things about the business. You can come in and build the car. In fact, you have to come in and build the car with us. It takes two weekends and you'll learn everything there is to know about a car. It's just a friendly thing. We want you to bring friends. So if you buy one of our cars, you can bring three friends with you. You can bring family and bring the kids, that kind of thing. We can't take more than four or five people at a time, so don't bring a hundred or they'll have to watch. And, uh, um, and then the, everything's local. So we started here in Phoenix and that's our local micro factory location. First one, we'd like to put 30 of them around the country and then put them around the world. Our design process is much as what we've discussed and uh, basically what that means is we look around the world for inspiration and we do it primarily online. We run competitions and those competitions have sort of grown like this and this is the size, it's not logarithmic, it's just those numbers on the side. And so we have 8,000 contributors roughly today on our cars, which is pretty strong when you consider the open source community of something like the Linux kernel to be in the 2,000 to 3,000 person range. We've got a lot of collaborators that are working hard on our cars. That sort of right sizes it for you. This is what our age distribution looks like for those of you that think this is only for the purview of people 60 to 70 who are good resto modder hot rodders and for people who are 15 to 25 who have a lot of time to hack things. Um, <laughs> We have a pretty good age distribution in case that helps. These are some of the sample competitions that we've run. So we tend to make them geographically located or psychographically located, which is a big word for if you imagine yourself to be a pilot. Or if you imagine yourself to be a soldier, you imagine yourself to be a mother of three even though you have ten children or a mother of three even though you have one. Um, uh, the, this is what a psychographic is about. And so we do lots of different competitions, but they're all focused on the niche. And too often people have thrown out that idea of niche car building as something that's either unprofitable or only for the purview of sports car manufacturers, and that's not the case. So we run these competitions and we take in ideas and we develop concepts. And these are the things that Harley Earl, who was a famous designer for General Motors in the 1950s, really brought to the fore. And that was we'd make a concept for our boss, Alfred Sloan, and then we'd make one, we'd take it to a car show, and we'd let people drool over it, but we'd never actually make the car. <laughs> you know, if I had a dime for every time somebody my mother and father's age told me that you would have to run a car company if you were gonna start it, I would be a wealthy man. Because the, it's so interesting. If I told you how to start a cloud computing company, I mean, I wouldn't even know where to begin. But when people tell me how to start car companies, there are all these preconceived notions, like concept cars don't ever get built, and you have to, you have to produce at mass scale, and there's a minimum efficient volume of a million cars, and big car factories are the only way to build things, and dealerships are boring and awful places to do business, and you know, Saturn was a great car company, and, uh, you know, <laughs> and all these kinds of things. And there are all these notions that we all know, even though we may do many, many different things in our life. So I'm here to dispel some of those notions. Concept cars can be real. They might not be able to be real on a one-off basis, I don't know how to do that yet, but on a much reduced scale, say of 2,000 cars total, we can build a car and make it fun. It will be different than the Lexus or the Prius that you might drive. It may not 
have all of the creature comforts that you might be looking for in that car. And for those, I definitely invite you to go to the Toyota dealership or go to the GM dealership. And I'm not being funny about that. They do those cars very well. But if you want a car that's simple, if you want a car that's safe, and if you want a car that's reaching forward in technology to do things that are different, then I think we make a really good play. So this is a little bit about our community. And what it says is the black line is the one to watch here. The black line is sort of the growth of people who uh, take part in our competitions. And then the other lines play off the black line. So green is how much cash we award in a competition. And interestingly enough, this is something we've learned. The more cash you put into a competition, it doesn't necessarily mean more people participate. And then gray, if you can see it, is how complex the competition is. And, and sometimes the more complex you make it, the more people participate in a competition. I know that there are probably some questions about what a competition means, and we can talk about that. And I'll be here afterwards to talk about it. So Burgers, Cars, and Welding, this is what you'll see when you come. People sticking their heads into a car and asking, hey, how does that work? And you'll meet lots of cool people, too. And we're down, again, uh, not so far from here. Um, and so uh, this is our concept to production. The Rally Fighter came to market in 18 months. The average time for a car company to bring a big model to market is about five to seven years. So, and we're pushing that time down from 18 months even more. So that's what a drawing is, and then it comes out real. And you develop this amazing con uh, uh, continuum of people that get involved in the project, and they really are part and parcel to what your marketing is over time. They grow their own. It's a big social network around a specific kind of car. And you'll get a lot of people who say, I hate that car. I would never use that, which I think is great, because we need people to hate it in order to have people to love it. We can't all love the same thing. And I think that for a big economy car company, then that's a good thing to make sure that on average, most everybody loves the car. But for us, we need some haters and we need some really, really big lovers. And so it's kind of funny, we need that. So uh, our side pipes, we crowdsource, that takes a lot less and some fantastic ideas can come. This is a simple manufacturing solution which ended up being very elegant and looked good on the car. Um, our skins, we have the most radical skinning program in the industry to bring totally different exterior uh, treatments to the car. And we create an artist and patron relationship between our community and our customers. And if you haven't seen it happen, it's the most fantastic thing. You have these Renoirs and Matisses and Magritte's and Manet's and Lichtensteins coming out because they're trying to help you express what you want on your car. And this is a little different than saying, take a picture of your favorite vacation image and we'll put it on the side of the car. <laughs> we, we, though we like your vacation images, and I think they're beautiful, but they might not look good on the side of a car, um, our community tries very hard to help your car look the best it can be with the ideas that you bring to it. So we don't paint our cars. We think paint is really environmentally inefficient. And so we vinyl the sides of cars. It allows you to swap it out. It makes it easier. And there's less of an expectation that the cherry paint job that you get when it gets scratched by that mean man at Starbucks, he's, it excuses him from being such an awful person because the vinyl wrap can be changed. And so, uh, um, so uh, some examples of wraps, another example. They can be wild, they can be very mundane. It just depends on what you want. The interior was conceived. It took about four months to bring to market and we did that iteratively. So we had the exterior of the car, then we had the side pipes and then we had what configuration the engine was gonna be in and how we were gonna do the rear axle and then eventually we got to the interior and that's what we have right here. So uh, just a note about how we bring components together. Local Motors makes cars but we don't make components. So we make exteriors, interior chassis parts, and we do the interior of the car, but we buy all DOT compliant and DOT certified components. So lights, brakes, door handles, hinges, all of these things. And there's a good reason to do that. Those parts are really robust and they've been very well tested and there is an enormous network of people out there that make them and service them. It would be silly for us to go around those parts and try to do something else. Unfortunately, some of those purveyors don't like to share their data with us because they think that we want to become hinge manufacturers or wheel manufacturers, and we don't. But there's a lot of fear out there, and I think the U.S. auto industry has led the road in the fear-greed cycle, which means when I'm wealthy as a company, you're going to pay, supplier. And then when the supplier's like, ha-ha, when we've got the money, you're going to pay. And they just go back and forth, and they swap fear and greed. And we're trying to break that cycle. And we're trying to break it by saying that we'll do business with you if you give us the data that you have for your hinges. And in exchange, you've got to help us, um, and we will promise to make sure that the customers don't abuse 
use that. And so it, it sort of lifts the theory of trust. So we take that data, you can see in the column that's all the way over on the far side, your left, my right. Um, that's the real product. We bring it into the digital domain in the center. They may look a lot the same, but the column in the center is digital. And then the real car is the one that's all the way over on the right. So that's how we integrate parts. And this is part of what I think is important. The reason why you come and help build your car, it's because the do-it-yourself nation is upon us. If you've spent time on Etsy, which I'm sure none of the guys in the room have because <laughs> I know that Etsy is a 97% female community only, we think we should have an Etsy and Local Motors mixer. It would be awesome. <laughs> and so, um, so go to Maker Faire, take your kids, whatever, it's awesome. Uh, um, it, but you know, if you grow your own stuff, do your own code, make your own furniture, um, do your own bathroom tiling, you're gonna love Local Motors because you come in and learn everything about your car. And uh, um, if you didn't know how we're different, I'm gonna just hammer it home one more time. Big car companies have a major place in the world and they're gonna make really fantastic cars, but they do it in a specific way and they do it for the mass. So they take a lot of time, they have a lot of masters to meet, regulation, homologation, uh, safety standards, incredibly large and complex averaging out solutions, and they take a lot of people to do that, big factories and a lot of money. So we don't sacrifice the safety, we certainly don't sacrifice the sexiness of the car, but we do sacrifice the mass ability of the car, and we don't try to do that, we don't try to homologate our vehicles across many, many different areas. So small time, small people, small factories, small money, starting here in Phoenix. So um, our customers, this shows you they're real. We have 120 deposited customers for the Rally Fighter. The Rally Fighter will be available for five years most likely. There will only be 2,000 copies of it made. And nicely, about of those 120, um, greater than 50% of them are here within a four hour radius of where we started in Phoenix. So local is real and it's happening. This is our factory. Come see it. This is the inside of it. I'm gonna flip through some slides just so you have some visuals here. That's what it looks like, it's super cool. It's this micro factory retail experience. This is what we do when we do our chassis. I think sometimes showing is worth more than just talking about it. That's the tool we make our chassis on. We can do two a day. Those are two chassis coming through in one day. Very real, very physical. These are our bodies being made. Our composite body line, more on the factory line. This is vinyl wrapping a car. So the result is five times faster, 100 times less capital, and the proof is a car. And I'll give you some more images to sweat the appetite. This was our first testing. It goes on-road and off-road. It's street legal. The car is $59,000, so it's not cheap, but it is not hugely expensive when you think of what kind of cars have come out before. And so if you wanna have fun or go see nature and go see the world, a rally fighter is the way to do it. And we look forward to the next car that we're gonna develop and we'd like you to be part of what that is and telling us how that will be because that's what really makes a car company meaningful. It's what makes a car company local and it what, what makes it the future of car production in this country. Thank you very much.